Welcome back to Hot Topics in Makeup. Today we're going to be talking about Song Jia's controversy right now and it goes deeper than just wearing fake designer goods. She is being accused of pretty much faking her whole identity as the Golden Spoon Girl. Was her whole internet personality really made up by the agency or not? We're going to be diving deep into it. And a bonus topic, how are you guys dating in this pandemic right now? And are you a victim of mask? Fishing. Okay, let's get right into it. Y'all know I always use my Laneige cushion that I sang for in the commercial. <laughs> no, but for real, like I'm not sponsored by them. A lot of people think that I made these videos because I was sponsored by them. This company don't even know who I am, who actually sings for the companies. I'm just the person who sings their commercials. I am not a sponsored model by them. I wish. So by now, unless you're living under a boulder, you probably know who Song Tia is. She's known to be one of the hottest influencers in South Korea right now. I also did a video on Singles Inferno, the Korean dating show that went viral. I've been following her since before she blew up y'all so I'm an OG fan. So Song Jia was famous to have the Kim Su Jia image about her which is the golden spoon or pretty much a privileged girl. You know coming from a family or a background that is known to be privileged, rich, wealthy, whatever you want to put it. And a lot of her videos that went viral had to do with her doing hauls about designer goods. You know a lot of luxury goods that it seems like the millennial and like the Gen Z. In Korea there's also MZ which is like between millennial and Gen Z's. Where it seems like the younger crowd just love to, you know, wear these designer goods to be flashy. And I don't think there's anything wrong with that, but you know, it seems like a lot of younger people look up to these influencers and celebrities. It gives you a certain kind of image that people want to portray, right? So the first batch of the scandal controversy happened when people found out that a lot of the clothes that Tia was wearing, especially in Singles Inferno and in her Instagram, was known to be fake good, fake luxury items. Now a lot of international fans are saying, well, what's up with like wearing fake stuff a lot of people do it they do it all the time and that's true a lot of people wear fake stuff but in Song Jia's case it seems like when fans were asking her where was this brand from and in her haul videos she was introducing these items as real luxury goods and not fake for example one fan asked her where is this necklace from and she directly said it's from this luxury brand when fans later found out that those were actually fake items so it seems like the Korean netizens are not angry that she wore fake designer goods it was that she was pretending that they were real when they were actually fake. So Tia put out an apology later saying that she was sorry for you know wearing fake goods on TV and people were saying that fake goods infringes the copyright of the actual luxury brand blah 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 and we thought the controversy was over but people started digging more into Song Jia and found out that maybe her whole internet personality of the golden spoon girl might have been all made up. So people accuse her of not being a self-made influencer, basically saying that she has a whole agency behind her that was kind of creating this whole image with her. Usually it's the other way around where you kind of are a self-made and then an agency picks you up to kind of see your potential and then grow you even bigger. Okay, I'm trying this new palette right here. It's called the cashmere palette and look how beautiful it is. Fans are alleging that the house that she lives in, which is known to be one of the most expensive apartments in Seoul, and apparently if you want to own one of these apartments, it costs about like two, three million dollars. They were alleging that this apartment was apparently paid for by her agency in order to help her create content and keep up with the image of the golden spoon girl. I believe in one of the videos when someone asked how much is the apartment that you live in, she answered saying that it's about three million dollars in the market market. So people had this impression thinking that she actually owned this house when later they found out that she was renting this place. Of course she didn't directly say that she owns this place or that you know someone else is paying for it or she's paying for it on her own. I'm, I'm iffy about this because yeah I don't think that one is really responsible for revealing to the public who pays for the rent or if she owns it or not. I mean that's kind of her privacy but of course netizens are seeing the whole picture saying that the fake designer brands, the house that she was living in, the whole image was just created. Although she gave the impression that she was from a privileged family and that she was a self-made influencer and through her hard work she was able to afford this lifestyle. But why would someone like that need to buy fake designer brands? Allegedly, why would they have to have their housing paid by an agency? And a lot of netizens thought that they felt cheated out of because the whole point of an influencer and a creator is someone that does everything on their own. While a singer and actor, you know, they do get their things paid for by their agency. Of course, they have to pay for it later. But we all know that singers and actors, they have a whole 
whole team behind them from makeup to image and that's one of the reasons why an influencer and creator has a special space because they're known to be their own producer their own creator then there's this image that influencers and creators are a bit more raw it's not scripted it's their own life that they're portraying and connecting to fans in a more closer way than kind of like scripted shows and movies and singers and stage i personally am not a designer luxury person or you know i don't know anything about that stuff so i can't really say what is 100 true or not i'm sure a lot of these compilations are actually not true as well so don't believe everything you see on the internet but this is just what people are claiming um her agency spoke up and said that they do not pay for apartments it's an apartment that she rented out on her own with her own money that she earned they also say that a lot of designer goods are actually real and that they do have receipts that they can show and prove and that netizens are going too far with this controversy and rumor in terms of agency paying for one's apartments i mean that's kind of common as you guys know a lot of american influencers they all live in the share house so a lot of these influencers that live in this glamorous house it's not actually theirs it's something that's paid for by the agency but but they are very honest about it and a lot of people know about that so i do think it is possible that agencies now you know kind of treat influencers and creators like celebrities and they do pay for a lot of their things but of course in tia's case we don't know what 100 true is now why this controversy is pretty big in korea is because in the past there were actually a couple big youtubers and internet influencers that made up or kind of like blew out of proportion their own life story where it turned out to be pretty much fake and like a bubble and a lot of the things they said about their life turned out to be just something that they said to put this persona and image in front of the world so the question of the day is how do you guys feel about now influencers and creators that are kind of like put together kind of like singers and actors does that take away the whole purpose of an influencer and a creator coming from a normal self-made person who does everything on their own or can creators and influencers now be made i personally do think that it's a little crazy that uh, influencers can be made because the whole point of an influencer and an online creator is to have your own platform where you can speak up without having that whole connections to a broadcasting system a whole team behind you you know it's, it's about having your own platform to speak up to you it is reasonable that people want to see something true and raw and they do feel cheated out of if it seems like everything was kind of in the making by a whole team and just like a made-up persona um so we'll stay tuned to what happens <sighs> okay let's talk about mask fishing you guys have you ever been mask fished so korea boo had this really interesting article saying that in korea a lot of people are getting fed up that in online dating they're getting mask fished because everyone is uploading just pictures of themselves with masks and when they meet their date in real life oh my god they were hiding the ugly parts about their face so supposedly some dating companies are only allowing one mask picture i can't believe in 2022 that's the problem that we have to deal with so i want to ask how is your dating life you guys during the pandemic i think that's one of the reasons why singles inferno also did pretty well is because uh, we just need a little bit of excitement in our life by watching dating shows now people do generally look more attractive when they have a mask on this is so true because you're covering like 70 percent of your face and usually people have cute eyes so some people love wearing masks some people love the idea of covering most of their face and they just feel more confident i know i'll be wearing a mask and there's no reason to wear makeup there's no reason to try and look good in front of everyone you could hide your experience Expressions like sometimes masks are great. So I want to know would you personally date someone and then they take off their mask and they are not what you expect it to look like? Would you still give them a chance? <laughs> Not gonna lie, it's a little sad that we're talking about it because you know life shouldn't be about judging based on someone's looks. But when it comes to online dating, there's nothing you can do except judge based on someone's looks. You're literally swiping left or right based on how they look. Online dating can be very, very disadvantaged and more toxic than good in my personal opinion. So I don't do online dating, but never say never. So from the topic of influencers faking a lot of things to mask fishing and having so many fake things on the internet how do you guys feel about this 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 whole internet issue is there a limit to how we portray ourselves perfectly on the internet i am not naked i do have clothes on cute cheetah top ah! 
Like always, you can check out every single item that I use down below in the description box. Hitting the like button, you guys, subscribing, really helps out my channel, you guys. I love Crazy Grace channel. I'm just talking about hot topics, K-pop, current events. I love communicating with you guys, so that's going to help me a lot. Hitting the notification bell, I reply to all my early birds. I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye!